Welcome to the closing act of this year's 2020 conference on global economic analysis. Despite our somewhat shaky start, the conference has been an overwhelming success with over 1,000 registered participants, with the vast majority present for the first time. The online format doesn't quite have the same value of in situ participation. I particularly miss the chance meetings in the hallways or city byways, the cultural and social events, and the opportunity to get away from the routine of being at home. My closing thoughts are grouped into four parts. Uh, first, uh, thanks and remembrances, uh, this year's uh, awards. Uh, thirdly, highlights of the center's accomplishments over the past year and a preview of next events. The COVID crisis seemed to come out of nowhere. It is too early to assess the full impacts, though we know they will be tremendously damaging. And it's too early to anticipate when we will return to a semblance of normalcy. Even, even if today many countries are starting to relax the most draconian measures. It was with reluctance and sadness that we canceled the event in Tokyo, though the upshot was a huge burst in participants, particularly from regions typically underrepresented at the conference, notably from Latin America and Africa. Despite the fact that we missed Tokyo, let me nonetheless extend heartfelt thanks to Ken Kawasaki, the driver behind the Tokyo venue, and his colleagues and GRIP staff that had expended huge efforts to make the event a success. As per usual, Ginger pulled another rabbit out of the hat by making this event succeed despite the conversion to the online format. Many of you may remember the 2010 Bangkok meeting that was transferred to Penang in under one month. She was backstopped by our other support staff, Holly and Jeremy, to make it work. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the literally hundreds of other persons that come from the GTAP community who provide their support, the session hosts and chairs, the abstract reviewers, and the conference program committee. We would also have shared a moment to remember our dear friend and mentor to many of us, Wally Tyner, his early support of Tom's ambitions for GTAP put the project on solid ground, and Wally continued his support as an active member of our community. He is and will be sorely missed. Let me turn to uh, the uh, awards uh, this year. This is my favorite moment at the conference dinner, and uh, we have a, a, uh, numerous awards to celebrate. First are the conference travel grants. In honor of Wally, the center created a new grant in his name. The first recipient is appropriately Xin Xiao, now with the Joint Global Research Institute, part of PNNL, based at the University of Maryland. Xin and Wally worked together on a number of projects and papers, so it's quite appropriate. The Ken Pearson Award, offered by the Center of Policy Studies in Melbourne, was awarded to Andresa Proque, from the Federal University of Juiz de Fora in Brazil. Finally, the third recipient, Jingwen Li, received the Alex Maraus Thomas Rutherford Award offered by the GAMS Corporation. She is from Cornell University. Even though the awardees were not able to benefit financially from this year's travel awards, they merit the recognition of having had outstanding submissions from young economists to this year's conference. The next set of awards regards the GTAB Research Fellows. This award recognizes significant contributions to the GTAB community. This year, uh, the award is conferred for a three-year term to Jonas Lofman from Humboldt University, Simon Mevel from the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and Roberto Rasson from the University of Venice. Allow me to say one or two words for each. Jonas has been a frequent contributor to the GTAP conference and has been working at incorporating the economics of water in CGE models. Regarding Simon, I've known him since he was a research assistant at the World Bank, toiling at using the early version of the Envisage model. He was instrumental in defining the contours of the recently signed African Continental Free Trade Agreement and has been delivering courses on the GTAP model in Africa. 
Roberto's list of interests is long, and he has touched many aspects of CG modeling, including his latest work on improving the parameterization of dynamic baselines. All three will be a welcome addition to the current uh, roster of research fellows, as you can see on this slide. The next award, which is conferred only rarely, awards a person who has made singular and sustained contributions to the GTAB network. It is known as the Hall of Fame Award. Since 2007, this has been awarded to 10 persons. This year, the GTAB Hall of Fame welcomes Ken Kawasaki. Many of you will know him because of this year's near venue at GRIPS in Tokyo, where Ken is a professor. But Ken has made many important contributions to the network over many years and is the driving force in the current efforts to improve the data on trade protection with a focus on preferential agreements and non-tariff measures. Congr uh, please take a moment to congratulate Ken for a well-deserved honor as he joins others in the Hall of Fame. Finally, I would like to recognize Bill Powers, recipient of this year's Allen Powell Award, conferred each year to a board member that has provided outstanding service on the board in the spirit of Allen Powell. Bill is chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission and has continued to strive for reaching the frontier of applied trade modeling in his agencies and providing unstinting support to the center's work and mission. Let me move on to this year's center highlights. Uh, let's start with uh, the GTAP database. Uh, we uh, released the uh, we released the much anticipated uh, version 10 of the GTAP database. Its release proved to be difficult, but it is a significant enhancement over version 9, not to mention the expansion of the number of sectors to 65. Many of the standard database extensions are now available and some are still in the pipeline and will be released soon. Work never stops. We have recently released to board members the first pre-release of version 11. Its main feature is a new 2017 reference year and the next release will have a total of five reference years. Regarding the GTAB model, we are consolidating changes to version seven, the so-called facelifted version Many of the recent versions reflect additions and modifications for the recursive dynamic version of the model. We are also preparing extensions. Uh, GTAB E Power is already ready, as is GTAB uh, HS, which has been enhanced with TRQs and imperfect transformation of output. Uh, uh, versions of the model that incorporate domestic margins and the MRIO version are in the pipeline. The center has been busy on the research end. Though COVID-19 has dominated our work since March, we have worked on the African Continental Free Trade Area, the new NAFTA, also called the USMCA, global value change, the Paris Agreement, and the European Green Deal. We have also been working on parameter estimation, Armington and CDE elasticities, and working with Tom Rutherford and colleagues on subnational modeling of the US economy. We were saddened to cancel this year's short course, but under the circumstances, it was inevitable. The online courses are proceeding as planned, and we are assessing new offerings such as GTAP ePower. Given the huge turnout at this year's conference, we will provide a short introduction to the GTAP database sometime in July for all of the new participants. We are also pleased to see the continuing success of Mary Burf Fisher's introduction to CG models publication of the third edition, which uses a new version seven of the GTAB model is imminent. The Journal of Global Economic Analysis is now entering its fifth year. The next issue will be devoted to six papers that have emerged from uh, the so-called baseline project. Finally, the network continues its expansion with more than 21,000 members and counting. Moving on to next year, we look forward to seeing all of you in person in Fort Collins at the foothills of the gorgeous Rocky Mountains.
Our host will be Colorado State University, and you can watch a preview of the conference at the displayed URL. The board this week voted to hold the 2022 conference in Kigali. It will be co-hosted once again with our colleagues at the UN Economic Commission for Africa. Beyond 2022, venues are somewhat uncertain. We have some feelers for a European venue in 2023 and hope to have a host in Brazil in 2024. Please don't be shy and uh, make an offer for any year beyond 2022. Finally, let me conclude by saying goodbye. Thank you for your participation and support and see you next year in Fort Collins.